Joe Paterno. To an outsider looking in, he's just a football coach. But to Penn Staters, he's so much more. A grandfather figure, a hero, a legend, an icon. Just a few of many adjectives used to describe the most winning coach in college football, and more importantly, the man responsible for making Penn State what it is today and believing in success with honor. After coaching the Nittany Lions for 45 seasons, Paterno has made an impact on more than just the students, but also on the lives of thousands of young men who have had the privilege to be a part of his legacy. Over the four decades Joe Paterno coached at Penn State, students, alumni, and fans knew him only as a man they saw portrayed on TV. But the people that really knew him, aside from his equally adored family, was his team. Joe Paterno started coaching at Penn State in 1950 as an assistant coach to Rip Angle. In 1966, Paterno became head coach of the Nittany Lions and would remain coach until November 9, 2011. During his first year as head coach, Paterno made a great impression on new recruits and current players. Dr. Van Stevens, a 1969 graduate and former halfback of the Nittany Lions, was a freshman when Paterno took over for Coach Engel. He says that playing for Paterno was a great experience and that he had a huge impact when on Dr. I... Stevens' life. Was in my senior year, Mr. Lincoln drove me out to Penn State, and at that time, Joe Paterno was a recruit recruiting uh, backfield coach for players potentially in New York State, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and probably Maryland, Delaware. So I had gone out there and spent about four days there. Of course, they review your films. And from there, I received a letter saying I've been accepted to Penn State on a full scholarship. And I remember going on the football field the first day, and Joe was out there, and he was still the backfield coach, and Rep Engel was there probably in his mid-70s. And we had noticed that there was no footballs on the field. So Mike Reed who went through four years at Penn State, played for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was a, uh, from Altoona, Pennsylvania, and played middle linebacker. And he said to Joe that there's no footballs on the field to play with. How are we going to practice? And Joe said, at any one given time, how many people have a football in their hand? Of course, we all said one. And then he said, we're going to find out what the other 21 do. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, he was a character in the sense he had a great sense of humor. At, at break time on the field during summer ball, he always would give us Coca-Cola and small bottles covered with ice. That was his treat for us. I find that I found him to be a man of integrity, honesty, uh, very straightforward, very smart, clever, uh, had a, a way about him to gain respect amongst the players and simply because uh, of his whole demeanor. Um, he could accept failure, but he wanted you to work hard at to try to override that. In my particular instance, I had a little problem with English. Now, Joe Paterno's wife was an English major. It was many times he would invite somebody over to his house that was having problems academically. His wife would tutor you for about an hour, hour and a half, and then you'd sit down and have a nice Italian meal with him. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. My freshman year, he became head coach. Mm -hmm. So we all took him out to dinner, the, our freshman class. And I remember many of the parents sending congratulations. And at that time, you had telegrams. And everybody was excited because he was an exciting guy. Uh, Rip Engel was from an old type of school, you know. Uh, grinding it out, and Joe was representing a, a new type of football, maybe more passing, less less uh, running. And he had he was very vivacious. He had a lot of lot of energy. Um, um, so, ba based on how you saw him, obviously <laughs> the media back in the the sixties and early seventies is a lot different than the way right. it is today. But the way he was portrayed back then, would you say that's accurate to how he was in real life, or? Um, did they yeah, claim up to be different? I would say that. I think that's how he was in real life. Okay. And he would have, you could see in his family traditions when he invited you to his house 
to uh, have tutoring with his wife. It, w- it was a very harmonious, a very, very, um, I don't know, a soothing experience that there was harmony within the family. I didn't find him to be condescending or demeaning to his wife. He had respect. It was always positive reinforcement. Um, I mean, it was a great experience. <laughs> you know, not many people can, you know, be that close to a, a coach and have that kind of feeling of a sincerity and honesty, commitment. Uh, he was consistent. That's what I liked about him. If he said something on Monday, it didn't change on Saturday. It didn't change on the following week. You, he was predictable. He was not schizophrenic. In this. He was very, very grounded. Someone that you um, could reach out to and ask if you're having a problem. Uh, and you know he would reply. He wouldn't ignore you, you know, because you're dealing with over, you know, uh, over 100 kids playing football. Uh, he wouldn't ignore you and say, you know, you're just a number. You always knew that behind it you were a person, and he emphasized that. Before playing for the Buffalo Bills, former linebacker Doug Allen made Penn State history during his senior season as a member of the 1973 undefeated team. So when you see that video, what's your first reaction to it? Because obviously you played for him during that era, so you know some of the people on the team, and you knew how he was back then. Um, it's, it's, a lot of it rings very true. Um, particularly the part about uh, Joe's commitment to... Uh, players on the team being students first. That wasn't just something that he uh, preached, it, he, he practiced it. Uh, so if you had labs during your, your, uh, spring, your first spring practice when you were a freshman, you went to those labs. Uh, that was your first priority. Uh, I, I think he was very interested in producing citizens, uh, not uh, professional football players. I mean, he was as competitive as anybody, but um, he, he wanted you to experience college life, to be a productive student, to get something out of going to school here, and to use your education to contribute something to, this, to society. And so we've got, in, in the long blue and white line of football players, doctors and lawyers and uh, small business people and uh, teachers and um, uh, really productive citizens. And I think that's the legacy of uh, Joe Paterno and the program. Uh, the part where they were sort of facetiously talking about him being a nice guy and then showing him on the field was also true. He, he wasn't um, warm and fuzzy to players. The thing you saw in the uh, press conference when he was being funny and genuine, and that, that certainly was Joe's personality, but we didn't always see that. He, you know, you got to remember something about college football, even at Penn State. It's 50% of the players who get recruited to come here, and we're all told we're, you know, we've got great potential and they'll take good care of us and we'll enjoy the experience. 50% of the players that come to any college, and what are the scholarships now, 85, aren't going to play. So it can be a difficult experience if you expect to be a starter and you end up being a backup. And it's a, it's a, and it's a, it's a competition, and some players win and some players lose. And the head of a college football team at this level is, is, a, is like a CEO. They have to make some tough decisions. And so most players didn't get close to Joe in the sense that he was like a sort of warm and fuzzy uncle. He was not avuncular at all. He was tough, uh, uh, sometimes um, uh, mean-spirited. Uh, he didn't, uh, he suffered fools uh, poorly and um, uh, and you better have your act together if you if you were going to succeed on this football team. the years, that, that image, that sort of reputation, hardened into an, to an icon that was like the Wizard of Oz. It wasn't real. It wasn't, he, his image became something that was not human, that was more uh, godlike. And um, that, I think it's important. Um, make sure people understand wasn't Joe. Joe was a human being with human frailties and faults and, and a, a, an enormous uh, integrity and enormous commitment to, uh, to uh, making going to college a positive thing for college football players, which was unusual then and it is now. Uh, and I'll always be grateful to him for that. Every 
As he prepares for his final game as a Nittany Lion, senior offensive lineman and team captain Quinn Barham reflects on what it was like to play for Joe during his legendary 400th and 409th win at Beaver Stadium. Um, but in terms of Coach, Coach, Coach Paterno, I mean, he's always been a great guy. You know, he's been very, just, uh, just always very about his morals. He's about doing the right thing and um, just fix it, doing it, handling the little things, and that's when the big things take care of themselves. And that's something I've, I've learned just to live by. Because um, once you do things, uh, once you do small things a lot, the big things take care of themselves. And that's something I just I just practice every day in my, in my everyday life. And of course, he's done a great job with that over the years. And just to, to speak to Letterman, who come back and just to talk to us and just hang out with us, build a relationship, they all say the same thing. And um, to see them in their position, whether they play professional ball or they're just businessmen, um, you, you see that the impact that he's had on them just as men. I would I would say Joe Paterno is exactly how he how he looks and how he's portrayed um, on television or however he is publicly. And um, he, he's the same guy. You know, he's very humble. Um, you know, he, he doesn't he he doesn't like to say much, but when he, when he when he speaks, you know, he it comes out like in a way that he, he knows what he's talking about, and you have you have no you have no choice but to respect it because of his experience, his knowledge, and you you just respect that. I know a lot of people at Penn State they treat him like, you know, I think they treat him a certain way because that's just the way he he's portrayed. He's a great football coach, and he seems like he's doing the right thing with these young men and just winning football games. And um, I think it's also just more than that. And I think if you were to sit down and have a conversation with him just about anything, I think the first thing he would do is probably crack a joke. And whether he would joke on you or just joke about something around you just to make, thing, make, the, make the situation lighter. And just, just as an iceberg, he's a regular guy. And um, I think he's done a great job of separating the football coach, Joe Paterno, from the, the grandfather, great-grandfather of Joe Paterno, the, the, I mean, the friend, the husband, you know, the father. And I think he does a great job of just separating the two. And I think on the football field, hard-nosed guy, he cares, but it's a tough love type of thing. He, he's not afraid to yell at you, pull you by your face mask, kick you in the butt. It doesn't matter. He's not afraid to do that because he, he wants you to be better and he sees the potential in you. And off the field, he, he's, a, he's a similar version of that, but he knows when to turn it off. He knows when to be, you know, Joseph Paterno, like a very nice guy. He, he tries his best to relate to us as younger players. And uh, he does a good job with that. And um, I think that's the main difference. I think everybody, I think people's perception of him in terms of how he is as a real person is, is about the same. I don't think he hides or or tries to seem, you know, fake in a way when, when he's in front of a camera. I think he just doesn't want to reveal too much about himself to the point where people take it and twist into something that he's not. Over the past 45 years, Joe Paterno has without question made a significant impact on both the university and members of the Penn State football team. But the perception of Joe Paterno is unique to everyone. Whether it be a former player, a fan, a student, or a media outlet, there are few who know the real Joe Paterno. But one thing is certain, his life and legacy will live on through those he has touched. As a father, a friend, an educator, and of course, a football coach.